Hello everyone, today we're talking about HMS Habakkuk, the theoretical World War II aircraft carrier that was to be made of ice. It was to be built using a mixture of sawdust and ice known as piecrete, which could make a ship virtually unsinkable. Thick enough piecrete is resistant to bombs and torpedoes. It could also be repaired using water and sawdust. Most attractively to the Royal Navy, piecrete was cheap to manufacture, costing theoretically 1% of the energy required to produce steel. This was important, as steel and aluminum were in extremely high demand during the war. Early theories for constructing such a carrier was to simply use an iceberg, but finding icebergs with suitable surfaces for runways is a rare thing. Icebergs can further be unpredictable. They frequently capsize themselves. The idea of a man-made ice carrier was developed for the Allies by Geoffrey Pike, a British inventor who worked on projects throughout the war, including the M29 Weasel. Pike drafted his carrier plans, which would eventually make their way in front of an enthusiastic Churchill. They showed a flattened ice carrier with a hollowed-out center to shelter aircraft. This carrier would have been of high value to the Allies, providing a floating island of sorts, where aircraft could hunt German U-boats in the air coverage gaps that existed for convoys making their way from North America to Europe. In 1943, a prototype was commissioned to be trialed on Patricia Lake in Jasper National Park in Alberta, Canada. It would be a thousand-ton model. Picrete is actually well suited for building. It can be machined like wood and cast like metal. However, several issues arose with the plans. Ice is heavy and tends to warp under its own mechanical stress. To strengthen it, it needed to be cooled to a temperature of minus 16. The ice would need to be further reinforced with steel. Even more steel would be required for a refrigeration system for the carrier as well, and ductwork to pump the cool air around the structure. The ship's surface would need to be further covered with insulation. The Canadians who were responsible for building the ice carrier were deemed to have the material necessary to undertake a full-sized carrier. However, the requirements and cost ballooned during the planning phase. It would need to withstand the largest waves on record, land the heaviest of bombers, and either maneuver with multiple propellers or house a rudder. This posed significant engineering problems. Ultimately, the vessel's growing requirements meant it ended up needing more resources than several conventional aircraft carriers. By late war, HMS Habakkuk was simply not needed. It was further not the only concept for a floating island carrier. Other ideas such as welding liberty ships or landing craft together were explored. More often than not, just simply improving current methods and designs make for the best use of resources. The Allies improved their long-range aircraft and the methods by which carriers could be manufactured. The United States built 122 escort carriers during World War II. Though to Project Habakkuk's credit, it took three hot summers to melt the original prototype on Patricia Lake. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this frosty brief on World War II's ice carrier that never was. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.